welcome to the Career Coffee Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Urban, Certified Career Strategist and Executive Coach, removing career roadblocks so you can achieve more impact, influence, and income. Welcome to Career Coffee Chat. I'm so excited to share this space with you today. My name is Aaron Urban. I'm the host of Career Coffee Chat Live and the podcast, and I'm a executive coach and what I do is focus on career acceleration for driven and emerging and evolving leaders who want those career roadblocks removed so you can experience more influence, more income, more influence and impact. And as I get over my tongue tiedness today, because it's a beautiful day here. If you're listening to the podcast, it may be a colder day by the time we get around to replaying the show. But right now it's a beautiful day and I have the sunshine in front of me. Most importantly, we have a great guest for you today to talk about that mid-career crisis and what happens when we have that mid-career wake-up call. Some of it's earlier for us and some of it's later for us, but inevitably it happens. And over the past year and a half, we've had a lot of professionals having a wake-up moment, if you will. For the first time in our lives, we've stopped our busy rush forward and actually had a moment to pause, what I call a pandemic pause. And from that pause, we've had a few questions. What am I doing with my career? Do I even like what I'm doing? I don't. What do I do? So there's a lot of questions on the rise and a lot of change, not only in our social and economic structures, but also for us personally as professionals. So what we're going to do today is have an amazing guest on for you to share what it takes to empower your career and advance yourself as a professional. I want to welcome you to the show. Now, more about my awesome guest, Carol Parker Walsh, PhD, JD. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm underqualified here. <laughs> she will be talking about career crisis to career clarity. If you're not sure what to do, but you don't, you don't like your current career path, or maybe you're not quite sure what to do moving forward, this is the right place for you today. So discover how to unabashedly take charge of your career pivot and make it your success story. And I love this quote by Carol. She says, tear up the rule book and write your own. Her mission is to empower high achieving women at midlife to get unstuck and take control back of your life of your career. Now, not only that, she's a TEDx speaker, two time bestselling author, international keynote speaker, award winning consultant, and has been the go to coach for Grammy Award winners, Paralympic gold medalists, Fortune 500 executives, and many successful driven professionals and entrepreneurs. Without further ado, I want to welcome to the show, Carol Parker Walsh. It's such a pleasure to have you on today. Hi, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> to have you here too. Yeah, so I wanna say hi to all of you as you come in, as you mentioned before, don't be shy. Put your questions, put your comments in the chat. We're here for you. We want to make sure that this moment is also yours too. And if you're watching the replay later on the podcast, feel free to reach out directly or comment on the replay itself. We will be notified and we'll get back to you. So Carol, I am curious. You have all these acronyms up your neck. You're a BC, <laughs> you're a JD. What made you make that massive transition yourself, that pivot yourself into something that's lifting others up. What made you do that? Yeah, that's such a great question. I think in my own career journey, I've made a few pivots myself in really trying to find and explore what it was that really sung to my heart or made sense for mm. me or really utilized my skills and my gifts, my natural genius or talents in the best possible way. But it was a really a life altering event that really crystallized for me that mm -hmm. it's time that I really leaned into and focused on what was important for me mm. and not what I thought I should do or other things. So I was was working on a weekend like high achieving professional women do <laughs> and I was um, driving home with my kiddos in the car and they were small at the time and I was in a near fatal car accident and so coming home it was a Sunday it wasn't too late but I was on a two-lane road and saw lights coming my way and on on either side of me one was a drop off into a really deep ravine and the other was oncoming traffic in the side of a hill but you know for me what was pivotal is that i heard a voice as if it was sitting in the car next to me that said turn now and i remember at the time thinking turn where <laughs> because 
the options were less than optimal, but I made the turn. I did get hit. I was had multiple surgeries and a wheelchair for six months. It was really life altering. But the thing that kept going on and on in my mind was that voice that said, turn now. And Mm -hmm. I thought about that. Like how many times have I heard, or many of us have heard throughout our lives or careers and said, is this really what you want to do? Should you do something different? Is it time to go? Like we hear our own versions of turn now, but we often ignore it. And because the options don't seem optimal, right? We look to the left and the right and it's like, to do what? To go where? Because this is what I know. This is what's making me money. This is Mm -hmm. what I'm comfortable with. This is what, you know, people know me for. And so the idea of shifting out of that and what will happen, because we don't know what we don't know. We don't know if the left or the right is going to be a good or bad. And, And most of the times in life, the options aren't glorious and fabulous and horrible and miserable, right? They're usually the choice between two things that we're not quite sure about. So Mm -hmm. many people stay on the path because they don't know what to do. And in Mm -hmm. many ways, what I equate that to is if I had stayed on the path, I would have literally died that day. But I think a lot of us die just emotionally and spiritually. We get burnt out, Mm -hmm. we get overwhelmed, we get frustrated, we're stuck, we're unhappy. We have a different type of kind of demise, if you will, by just staying the course and not listening to that voice in intuitively that's begging and crying out for us to make a move to like make a turn and so that was that haunted me and stuck with me and that began the process for me to say you know what I'm going to choose a different path and start listening to myself and my intuition and not follow Mm -hmm. some pre-described way that I've been following to get where I am in my career that's fantastic and for one thing I'm glad you're here me too. <laughs> I'm glad you listened to that voice <laughs> and did not move on from this plane of living that mm-hmm. day and stayed with us and here to guide so many professionals who are empowering and uplifting themselves in their career. So yeah, and a I, very and moving story. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And at, at the time I had been doing research. So my research and my doctoral work was around gender and identity development mm-hmm. and how women kind of understand who they are and the relationship of how that determines how we figure out what we want to do okay. and antithesis of all these messages that we get and of the implications in organizational kind of settings. So I was studying and researching that. And what I really realized is that I wanted to really help and work directly with women in mm-hmm. making that transition and not just research and study it, but to actually get in the trenches, <laughs> actually, apply it. <laughs> actually apply it and give women the tools and the support that they need to actually go through that process and do it successfully. Yeah. And I'm wondering for any of you tuning in now or later, you know, how many times you've heard that little voice and do you actually listen to that little voice or do you ignore it? And it's interesting you mentioned the car crash because a very similar thing happened uh, for me as well. I had been kind of ignoring that little voice. You know how sometimes we're like, oh, that really don't make, that doesn't make sense at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just had this feeling that I did not want to drive to the point where I was in tears. I did not want to drive that day. And I tried to get someone else to drive me and I tried to get someone to come along and drive me. For some reason, I just didn't want to drive. And I thought that I have a problem driving. But that day, I just had this feeling of dread mm. went ahead and did it and sure enough car wow. had went into the windshield uh, ruined my oh. knees for the rest of my life well okay to be fair i did a lot of phys- personal physical therapy and i my knees are doing fantastic considering they told me i'd have them replaced by the time i was 35 and face messed up concussion you name it so wow well, not quite as bad as your experience but it was very interesting and after that moment I did not ignore the little voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no yes. longer ignored the voice. Um, yeah. To the point where I get wow. something and I tell my family, I say, look, I don't know why I'm getting this feeling. It doesn't make logical sense, but I know this is what needs to be done. It will come clear later because other times I've ignored it. Not such a big deal. Mm-hmm. But has it worked out for you too, Carol, or maybe people you've talked to that they've ignored it. And then later they're like, Oh, that's what that <laughs> That is, that's exactly right. And I think it's so powerful that you shared that because I believe really deeply that particularly women ignore that voice, that mm-hmm. we have been taught not to trust ourselves, not to trust our mm-hmm. instinct, to rely on somebody else's wisdom and opinions and thoughts and not really trust what we know to be truth 
truthful within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot, yes, that happens a lot. And when I work with my clients, many of them will say, I heard that voice five years ago, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but it seemed impractical or it didn't make any sense or whatever justification that we gave it not to listen to it mm -hmm. until it became so overwhelming that we had no other choice that to follow it. I think that happens more time than not. That little inkling, that whisper, that feeling, mm -hmm. that voice. I heard it years ago. I knew it a long time ago. I, I heard it multiple times. <laughs> I could look back and had I followed my own instinct and not cared about what other people thought or worried about, well, mm -hmm. what will happen, but just really kind of trust my gut and my instinct. I, so many things I could have avoided with that. But I right. really believe that as women, we're not taught to do that. Like, it's just like, it's like an emotional thing or something mm -hmm. that people kind mm -hmm. of poo poo, but there's really yeah. tremendous wisdom that we have as women through our intuition. And so absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I've, I've, yeah. I've definitely heard that story before. Yeah. And it's, I've, I've heard it too. And not just from women, also from men, like oh, I kind of knew, but I didn't pay attention because we logic ourselves out of it or what well, that doesn't really make sense yes. like, right now with the data I have right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I don't I have some mysterious feeling about a car crash. I know that, at the neuroscience level, just to explain the gut feeling a little bit. Now, does it cover all of these instances? Perhaps not. I, science has only gone so far as yeah. my uh, valid doctors. I go to a great, some great, you know, high class doctors in Houston. There's medical centers felt fantastic there, and he's super smart. And he's like, he's like, we're just in our infancy in the science. He goes, we're just baby steps. These are so much we haven't uncovered yet, and it's so much exciting. But Regardless, what the neuroscience knows right now is that that gut feeling, because it's a feeling, it's rarely ever words. Like the words we hear, well, I'm not going to go there. Like it's something that cannot be explained through science mm -hmm. at this moment, but the feeling you get is mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Our limbic brain remembers everything you ever do. It's yes. not a supercomputer. Yes. And it's calculating all this stuff. So when they say sleep on it, it gives it time to run through all these things. When you get that gut feeling, you can't really express or articulate it. It's probably coming from that area, just saying, hey, based on everything you've ever experienced, the likelihood of X or Y, you know, <laughs> you might want to take a look at this. Yeah. yeah. And it has memory. I think that part of our brain kind of comes pre-programmed. It's like buying a computer that's already kind of loaded in with the software because yeah. it has this memory of from primitive times of mm -hmm. that gut instinct was a survival instinct. It's the thing that yeah. kept us safe. It's the thing that tells us not to go down dark at two o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Or sometimes we do listen to it because it does make sense and everyone will come to agree with us. But sometimes when it fires off and we're, we feel like we're the only ones hearing it, then that's when it becomes challenging to really listen to it. Because the other part of us by nature is that we are pack animals by nature. We love the approval and the collective wow. company of other people. Mm -hmm. And when we start operating in a way that doesn't feel aligned to the status quo or everybody else, we then begin to negotiate that that feeling that we're getting that we can't really explain as right. opposed to really listening to it because people around us will say oh that's crazy or that doesn't make any <laughs> sense oh you're just oh, you're just a worrier or like well people will try to explain it away when they don't mm -hmm. understand it and so then we rationalize and don't listen to it ourselves so absolutely right right and the, the biggest power of influence is social pressure Mm -hmm. It's true. So if, even if it's you know real or imagined, to be fair, because sometimes those people don't actually say those things, but we tell oh, ourselves, yeah. oh, well, if I do this, they'll think that or, yes. I, you know. Various. That's so funny. It is mostly imagined because we do think the entire world is going to line up at our door and knock on our door and say, that's crazy. Stop doing that. What and that's <laughs> right, right, right. Right. And what we don't realize is everybody else is worried about that too. So nobody's right. looking at you. Know, the same thing. I know it's not, I, there has been times in the past where I, I tend to just say what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm that I'm that person, and other people will after the meeting go. I was thinking the same thing. Thank you for saying that. Right? Yes. Like, no yes. problem. I'll hang myself out there. Yes. You know? Totally. <laughs> totally. So, Carol, this is fascinating discussion. So, I want to learn more about what you're seeing. Some of your know, people who are like maybe not paying attention to that gut feeling. What are they struggling with? And then how can they get overcome? And I also want to say hi to Muhammad, who just hopped on. Great to see you, Muhammad. So what's going on there? And how can they maybe leverage that? Are there some tools, tactics, techniques, tricks, 
Aww. Yeah. Yeah, I primarily the I work with people in midlife, right? So mm -hmm. I work with people who have followed a pre-described kind of way of being for a lot of years. And so really well entrenched in a way of going about their career, way about, uh, of going about things, have achieved success, are really locked into the title, the status, the money, and things of that nature. And so for me, one of the big challenges is letting that go or the belief mm. that if I were even to explore something different, that it would mean all of this would go away or all of this would be for all nothing. All or nothing thinking. Exactly. 100%. Yeah, that that yeah. if I even look in a different direction, like everything I've worked for will disappear. And there's also the fear of starting over, a feeling as if I put in too much time and years that to do something different. And, and, and even the concept of doing something different, I think, is a is, is a mis concept because really we don't do things differently. We kind of pivot or shift a little bit. We bring everything that we have to the table in mm -hmm. terms of what we do. So we're really not, but this idea of starting over, being a novice again, being the, being in that feeling that I've reached this high. Now I have to jump back and go back to the end of the line and start over mm -hmm. again. And these are just myths and misconceptions that, that people are really hold, holding. And so for me, what the first thing that I believe that is so important to do is to just to reconnect with the skill sets, the knowledge, the gifts, the superpowers, if you will, that I call them, that you mm -hmm. have inherently and not just from external things that you're holding your hat on or being validated by. Right. And so mm -hmm. for me, that means not just leaning on the fact that you have these degrees, like I can mm -hmm. totally do that, but I'm not practicing law, nor am I in academia, even though I have both of those degrees, but mm -hmm. I have a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and experience and skill sets from those experiences that I can leverage in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key thing is to really lean back into what are my natural talents and gifts mm -hmm. that I love to do, that I do well. Mm -hmm. I love Gay Hendrick's work when he talks about uh, your zone of genius, right? Yes, and how he talks about, favorite. Yeah. oh, it's, it's amazing. And he talks yeah. about people who get stuck in the zone of excellence. And mm -hmm. for me, I define that, or I see that as people who are leaning on the external skills, the external mm -hmm. degrees, the external things that they can hold out to say, see, because I have this, that means I know that or can do that. Right. As opposed to me. Uh, yes, absolutely. Superstition, because yes, know, super, this, what we call success superstition. So, oh, mm -hmm. I did this and I'm successful. So therefore all these things that I've done are must work. Yes. In fact, you oftentimes are successful in spite of yourself. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we don't we don't track that. And so this internal zone of genius, these things that we have, we're naturally gifted at, the things that mm -hmm. we do in everything in our everyday work that we don't pay attention to because it comes so natural, we don't really lean into that and see no. the breadth and depth of what that is. And when you can do that, one of the things, I was just working with a client the other day, and one of the things she said to me, which is exactly true in this process, is that all of a sudden her world opened up to her that from mm. thinking that this was the path that this was the only track that this is the only way all of a sudden things that seemed impossible became very possible and not daunting and not mm. unnatural but all of a mm. sudden the world opened up and so how you can then apply yourself what you can how you can leverage those natural gifts and genius into doing something that's much more in tune to you and leverage your education, your degrees, your experience, oh, and all bring mm -hmm. all of that to bear, you're not mm -hmm. starting over. You're just pivoting and taking that someplace else. It's like just packing up your marbles and going to another sandbox. It doesn't mean that you have to rebuild <laughs> the sandbox or things of that nature, but right. you're able to really leverage that and move into a space that is equally, if not better than where you are now. And that's getting over the hump of thinking that if I even make the move, something's bad going to happen, as opposed to really leaning into what you have to offer and expanding the possibilities, right. then all of a sudden you can step into something that's much more aligned to you mm -hmm. so that you have what I call career life alignment, not balance, but alignment mm -hmm. so that who you are, and what you do beautifully sing well together and you get paid for it and be successful at doing it. Absolutely. Like I tell people, your next best step is the intersection of your strengths, interests, and expertise. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't just say strengths and interests. I also said expertise. There's no yeah. need to just leave behind the value that you put into your career thus far. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we can leverage it. And what I'm just very similar, I 
we don't have to say, oh gosh, I have to start from scratch. Oftentimes mm -hmm. that's not the case. In fact, I don't necessarily recommend it unless you truly want to. Like just say you've been an engineer all your life and you want to be a vet. Okay, let's yeah. do that if that's where your heart is. Follow that dream. Yeah. And also, like you mentioned, encourage people. What we do oftentimes is focus on what we don't want. Mm -hmm. So whenever we think about possibilities, we start focusing on all the bad stuff. Well, this could happen. Oh, that could happen. Or, oh, and that's terrible. We're yeah. not looking at the positive side of it at all. Yeah. yeah. You're, you know, catastrophizing everything. Yeah. So a few folks have tuned in Hussein. Always great to see you. He's tuned in. The Adrian, good to see you. She says, inherent skills and natural talent. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Your superpowers. That's what I call them. Right. right? You know, superpowers. <laughs> Who knew that? So Hussein, who's also very thoughtful in his questions, he said, hello, Aaron. I also want to welcome your guest. So he says, hi, you cute too, Carol. She says, he says, over the past 28 years, I've worked in more than one job and each of them differs from the other. But the presence of a qualified team always helps me to excel. So including the work team was the most important work when I moved to a new job. And then the creativity stage begins, he mentioned. So it's not just all about him. He's saying it's also a little bit about the people he's around, tuning into that cultural element. Also, Ed, I bet, I bet also you probably have a natural gift of seeing and leaning into the people around you. A lot of people get a good team and don't even recognize it or don't know how to use a lot, utilize them in a way that mm -hmm. makes your time there for very successful. So I would even go as far as to say probably one of your own natural gifts is the ability to really lean into people, to make people feel supported and encouraged so that you can form this absolute amazing team to be a, to be great. Because sometimes people have good teams, but don't know how to utilize them well. So right. kudos to you for that. Sometimes. <laughs> Oftentimes, unfortunately, and that's yes. I think we're seeing the great resignation right now. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and then today, in this kind of new economy or like what I like to call the new work revolution, the skill sets that, that are being looked at or necessary now are more human centric and human focused mm -hmm. and they're more crossing across boundaries they're crossing boundaries as opposed to being more specific like how do you problem solve what are your critical analytical skills how are you utilizing debt data and technology how are you being a leader not just you yourself but supporting others to be able to be led and to rise and be better at what they do right. things of that nature so i think developing. right exactly and so yeah. I, I really think right now in in this economy with what we've been experiencing and even though there's a growth of technology what I think a lot of in employers or companies are looking for are people who also have a very human centric approach mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we're still working with each other. And because we're working in so much uncertainty right now, there's such a need for people that has have a deft hand to be able to support and mentor and guide um, other people, but also work in a way that's adaptable, flexible, and can deal with, you know, uncertainty and a lot of changes right now. And Absolutely. that takes a skill set that was not necessarily that people may put on a resume or comes from a degree or comes from a certification program. Those are skills that are often are just inherently within you that mm -hmm. you just have to tap into and really put forth in this new way of working that we have right now. Right. And it's very interesting you mentioned that because what we're finding, and uh, just to look, for those of you who don't know or just tuning in or haven't seen any of my posts at all, <laughs> I'm not saying anybody has because you know it is. <laughs> but I'm also attending a Coach Rice, the Dover Institute for New Leaders, and I'm doing an ICF accredited course there. Mm. So I'm amongst my fellow executive coaches. And one of the things that we're talking about right now that's trending and upward trending is the fact that in order to see true professional growth, you need to have personal growth. Mm -hmm. So that's becoming more of a component of one's professional growth is yes. the development of self. Yes, And it has been historically not necessarily a focus. In fact, it was a little bit shunned historically. It's not, you know, oh, we, we, we don't get to the touchy feely stuff. Mm -hmm. that? There's no place for that in business. I don't know how many times I've heard, well, there's no personal and professional. Yes. And if you think for a moment that you're closing the door in your per personal life when you go to work or, or log into the workplace, I have an, another thing for you, you might want to consider. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, I love, I love that you brought you. that up. I so love that you brought that up because that, and see, that's what I mean about these old mm -hmm. kind of archaic ways that we've been taught right. about mm -hmm. developing our career that has been bifurcated, right? That is like, this is personal, this is professional, and that I just have to keep my head down and like improve my skill sets as opposed to developing as a person and bringing the fullness of me authentically to the place. That's why I talk a lot about career life alignment, that mm -hmm. they're not separated, that right. your career is part of that greater ecosystem of who you mm -hmm. are. Yeah. And it's really all of that that you're bringing to the table. And that is what employers are looking for. And as employers mm -hmm. are getting that and are opening space for that, what I'm finding is that it's not trickling down to the minds and hearts of employees, people who are looking for positions or trying to promote or pivot, that mm -hmm. they're still holding on to these old ways of doing things. And mm -hmm. so when I start talking with them about, no, we're going to dig in deep into you, yeah. initially it's like, what? Yeah, no, wait, just, what? just update my resume, right? I see my resume <laughs> updated oh, in my yeah. LinkedIn profile. I'm like, no, no. What do I need? <laughs> I, I need, I need right. Need right. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. Do yeah. I go back to school? Do I get a certification? I mean, that's been drilled into our minds as the mm -hmm. way to advance in our careers. And I love that you said that because it truly is about the personal development as part of your professional mm -hmm. development. And that is the trick. That is the new revolution of work yeah. and the new economy. And if we're not getting that, you will not find the success that you are hoping to have. You will be stalled mm -hmm. and stuck where you are because you're not becoming, as I talked about before, adaptable and changeable. We live in a time of uncertainty and those who succeed aren't the times who are using old techniques that worked in the past, but those who could look at the past and be adaptable and fluid about what could potentially happen and how do we roll, change, and adjust. And that does take a much personal development as it does a professional development. So yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah, we can talk. I think I have a feeling we're going to, st we will stay here for a little <laughs> while on um, the Career Coffee Challenge Live today. I want to say thank you to Muhammad. He sent a shout out to Hussein. He says, you just, you have to acknowledge your team and learn yeah. from each other and everyone. You have some inner skill, as, as Dr. Carroll says. Super yes, skills. That's absolutely. right. Super power. Absolutely. Um, Rosanna, thank you very much. She said, great podcast. I'll be replaying it. So much good information. Of course, it's always available LinkedIn, YouTube, and awesome. Facebook. Don't forget to sign up for to the YouTube channel as well. And also have a Crew Coffee Chat business page on LinkedIn. Ooh. Ooh. We're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, and I'm so glad we're articulating this now because it's really, I think it's gelled in the last six months mm -hmm. that while we're not in a new normal yet, I don't know if there's going to be a normal for no, a while. We're in no. very strong change. Yeah, very strong. We are in the there. midst of the storm. Very I used to always enough. say, my pastor used to always tell me that you're either in a storm, coming out of the storm, or going into a storm. <laughs> you're either in it, coming out of it, or heading back into it. And I yeah. feel like, yes, and right now, we are in it. Like, it, mm -hmm. we are not That's stabilized it. yet. It yeah. is still anybody's mm -hmm. game and this is such an opportune time to really lean back and to mm -hmm. reflect on what it is that you have to offer to do that excavation i like to call it that archaeological dig and really mm -hmm. uncover all of what you bring to the table and throw away the typical vernacular and words that we use to describe things and start building going into deeper layers mm -hmm. right if you say you have strong leadership skills what does that mean yeah. right dig deep to is it because you're a great listener is it because you're uh, great at supporting and nurturing other people? Is it because you are fabulous at reading the room and being able to see the, like you're a puzzle piece, you, you love to put puzzles together so you, you can read the room and see what's missing and you know how to plug in something that would be useful and helpful for the bigger vision to move forward? I mean, look at those skills that you have and really start digging deep to find that personal deeper connection yes. and that right now in this midst of uncertainty, that's what's going to really rise and help you mm -hmm. to navigate the terrain that we're in right now until we do come to normal right yeah. because we're yeah. not going to go back to what we were it's going to be no. some <laughs> other iteration so as betty uh, betty davis says a bumpy ride so fasten your seatbelts <laughs> it's a bumpy ride so <laughs> so we have to really reach shift and change our traditional ways of thinking to release that and start stepping into the new iteration of, of how you do your work yeah, yeah absolutely 
I want to say hi to Mariama. Hi. From YouTube. Good to see you. Welcome. Again, don't be shy if you have questions, thoughts for any of you. How does that feel for you? That analogy. I love that analogy. You're either in the storm, you're moving out of the storm, or you're going into another one. While that may seem kind of dark, it's actually not necessarily because no. it's about change. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and just uh, as I shared with a coaching client years ago, he goes, well, he goes, I feel like I'm kind of just on a plateau right now. I've got some really great progress. And I said, well, you're trying it out. Like you're getting used to it for the next iteration. And yes. sure enough, because we, there's a change and then we coast for a little while and that settles in and we get used to it and we're starting to adopt to it and add mold into that. And then something else happens. And then, right. So that's life. That's absolutely life. life. And, and I find that these times are when the lessons are the, the greatest lessons are when mm -hmm. you're in the midst of the storm, because yeah. then, as you said, you come out of it so much more informed, mm -hmm. equipped and ready and at a different level so that when the next one comes, you're ready for it. And then you grow and you come out at another level. So it's all about growth of the human span and the lifespan. It yeah. is life. Yeah. It is what we go through life. And that's yeah. basically what it is. Yeah, yeah, I think we're starting to really see the dissolution of that work-life separation. Uh, that is no longer the case. It's not yeah. really, as you mentioned, the balance per se, as in you shut off one and the other starts. Mm -hmm. I do feel like there's spaces we need to create throughout our day, for sure. Oh, yeah. Setting boundaries, yeah. that's healthy. Oh, absolutely. And understanding how that work-life blend works mm -hmm. for you. And most importantly, to your point, Know, developing the self because we're mentioning a lot of things around resilience what you might want to call resilience that adaptability that flexibility a lot of people think well it's just true grit you just power through it no, no. actually <laughs> it's all about working on self yes so back to that part of self-development personal development is a core part of professional development the same thing goes for resilience it starts here inside Absolutely. Not just about powering through something. It's, no, you only you have know. so mm -hmm. much energy to power through that will give away. And yeah. powering through doesn't open you up to learning and growing so right. that you can flow with it. It's right. like being in water and resisting it as opposed to like letting yourself float with it. Right. And so resilience, mm -hmm. that, that part of that is like going with it and learning and adapting through it, as opposed to just, I'm just going to hold my breath because there's no growth. There's no learning that comes from that. And actually that right. can burn. That's the thing that burns you out and frustrates you and gets you stuck. Mm hmm yeah, she said, uh, Mary Emma says, it's hard at times to see the lessons when we're in the storm. Sometimes, oh, yeah. you know, that's a good point, because that's mm -hmm. why I fully believe in the power of reflection for all my clients. We all, I personally have a reflection practice. We all have a reflection practice. I encourage that in my clients, because it's true in the moment, we don't necessarily see the lesson. No. It's when we take a t the time to pause and reflect. And then we see the experience. That's when we evolve. Maybe not in it, but yeah. it's the after, it's the reflection that's so powerful. So speaking of, oh, and Dean. That's a hundred percent true. I always, when I'm going through stuff, I do ask myself, I, I've mm -hmm. taught myself to stop and say, Okay, I'm in the middle of something. What do I need to learn? <laughs> so I just like yell it out. What's the lesson? What's and even though it doesn't come to me in the moment, you're totally right. I spend a lot of times just reflecting and analyzing what, you know, what are my thoughts? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Like, what am I seeing and experiencing? What's the relationship? That mm -hmm. reflective piece is so powerful because as you come out of it, you can then look at that and start to see the formation. It's like little pieces floating around mm -hmm. that becomes clear once you're out of it so that you can right. really see, see what the lesson is yes and then start the impl implementation of it right yeah i mean when you're in the middle of it it is is you actually can't because your brain is engaged in other activities right well right. survival right. So, survival for what <laughs> right i mean you're engaged in other activities so your brain hasn't had time to you know disseminate the information download it cross compare blah 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 all these things have to happen that's oh totally yeah right. yeah like when i was in the middle of my accident i wasn't like what's the lesson here it took a minute right. it was in the recovery that i was right. able to start really thinking yeah. but yeah you're right when you're in the middle of it it's you're in protective safety survival mm -hmm. mode and so all your primitive instincts are going to come forward not that prefrontal mm -hmm. part that's going to think and logic through but it's a great opportunity to just note and pay attention so that as you come mm -hmm. out of it, you can reflect on it in a way so you can right. see, oh, this is what this was trying to teach me, or this is what I needed to well, this get is what from I that. Learned. This is what I learned about myself, or this is how I grew. And yeah. also, you know, yourself, 
And we don't do that. We don't do a good job of that, especially driven professional women. Don't right. do a good job at acknowledging and appreciating ourselves. Oh, no. mm -hmm. we're very bad at that. Very bad at that. Yeah. And it's important as a part of that reflection process to say, hey, what can I acknowledge myself for today? And mm -hmm. just starting to develop a practice of that, because I will share with you one of the core of, around just the, the tenets of success really revolves around self, mm -hmm. so how you see yourself. Yes. And if, if you don't love yourself, yes, I use the L-O-V word, you know, yeah. L-O-V word, yeah. Uh, if you don't love yourself, then chances are you won't invest in yourself. You won't believe in yourself. You will yes. be out there. So when we're probably, I don't know about you, Dr. Carol, what do you think when you start working with women, particularly when they're that midlife or any sort of career wake up call, mm -hmm. how much of that diving into that core confidence, that self-belief do you do? And what do you see from that? Yeah. Well, it is the first and deep and heart of what I do. We start there mm -hmm. because we can't do anything else until we really uncover that truth. One of the one of the activities I have my clients do is to do what I call a hundreds list. And I have them write down a hundred things that they've done over the course of their lives that they have achieved, accomplished, that they're proud of, that excites them. And the reason I have them do that is so that they can reflect back on the successes and the things that mm. they've done well. Because like you said, most often, particularly women, we do something and we just put it to the side and move on to what's next. And we don't reflect on oh, that was a great thing, or I stepped up and had courage there, or I mm -hmm. took that chance, or I took that risk, or I was able to make that happen when no one thought it could happen. Mm -hmm. And when we can see that, it gives us the proof and the evidence that as we move forward to do something different, that we've already done it. And so we're just relying on that strength to keep continue to move forward. But yeah, the deep dive is so important. It to really to get back to understanding self, that self-reflection, that understanding Understanding the things that motivate you and inspire you, those deep seated values, those belief systems, or then limiting belief systems, yeah, those narratives. <laughs> oh my goodness. The narratives that we've inherited or that we mm -hmm. have formed that we think are true that really aren't. So there is a lot of work that we start with. This and like you talked, this cognitive work that we do, this deep mm -hmm. self-reflective work, this like I call it an excavation, almost like an archaeological dig, yeah, yeah, to yeah. really get in there and ask those questions that we really never give ourselves the space to do. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's high achieving, ambitious, like we're going for that brass ring. Oftentimes I find that when I ask my clients, so tell me about yourself, that is hard to answer that without saying what I do. Because Ooh. it really is about mm. shifting identity from moving your mm -hmm. career identity to understanding who you are. Like who's your career or your job is part of your identity. It is not all of your identity. But when we often ask that question, it comes with like a full-fledged resume of everything that either was done or the credentials or the job titles. But to really ask yourself, who am I and what do I do and who am what am I about? Right. That's a question that we we don't often ask ourselves mm -mm. or spend the time to really find the answer to. And that is the core of the work that you're meant to do in the world. Like out of that nugget of juicy, right. delicious, fabulousness of you is really what brings out what the work you're meant to do in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, the connection to that is so powerful, but doing that work takes time. It takes an ability to have some quietness, to pull away from a lot of things around you. And too much of us don't give ourselves that time right. and space to do it. And to be honest, our society isn't designed to give you that time and space. You do, yeah, yeah more, more, know. more. Mm -hmm. And so to say, no, I'm going to stop for a moment and do this work, it's really challenging. I mean, holding that space. And for me, the biggest thing that I could do with my clients is help to hold the space for them to be able to do that work because mm -hmm. it is so easy to either do it from the place like it's an assignment so let me just do it because i'm used to getting it done True but really. not do the reflective work to right. say what does it mean about me what am i mm -hmm. learning about me what 
how is this answering some questions that were lingering mm -hmm. about me? Because the truth is, as a coach, our jobs are to really help to guide you to find the answer that you already know. It's like to help <laughs> you to unlock the key, mm -hmm. uh, unlock the door that you've kind of sealed that needs to open up so you can actually explore and express and understand these aspects of yourself to help give you the clarity and guidance to make the right decisions and choices that you want to make. Not that you think should be made or what society says you should make or what the job mm -hmm. says you should do or the tr traditional career ladder of whatever position that you're in. But right. what do it's, you want to do someone, that makes yeah. sense? Right. Absolutely. And we've been Absolutely. Doing that. I mean, it's oh, my goodness. Business, we have not put the heart in business. So I no. guess if I was to you know, redo my tagline, I would say I'm, I'm here to put the heart back in yeah. with them because it's just been it's been absent for so long. Yeah. We need to bring our full selves. It's a different time. It calls for different skill sets and a different approach. Yes. And I think that's, I think if you're to take something that's kind of awesome out of the pandemic, I know that sounds weird, but when you're looking for something that might be good is the fact that people have had a pause, some force, yes. some not, you know, they've had that time to reflect a little bit. And I think that's one reason why we're seeing the great resignation because we now they're more in tune with, I know I don't want that. Yes. And I've really enjoyed this and this is meaningful for me. So they're starting to realign what their priorities are because before it's been work and more work and, and oh yeah, if you're going to be a leader, you should work all your given time. You should never have a right. life. That's a falsehood. That's, that, not, absolutely. that's not a requirement. No, not this at all. This is a false structure that we've created mm -hmm. that doesn't need to continue. And yeah. you know, as Mariama said, self-acknowledgement resonates with me. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. Yes. Yes. I really recommend, you know what, as a part of reflection practice, even if it's just once a week. Oh, yeah. Take five, ten minutes. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What yeah. did I accomplish this week? You know, what, yeah. can I, what can I acknowledge? Yes. Able to do, even if it was I didn't yell at the kids. <laughs> they were running around. I didn't yell at the dog. You know, yeah. I I got up. I got coffee. I didn't yell at anybody. It's only eight o'clock, but we're good. Um, yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah. That is for you. I um, love it. I love it. it. Sounds like you're giving us permission to consider ourselves first when making decisions. Powerful. Yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yes. To yeah. prioritize yourself. Yeah. I joke and I call the great resignation, the great realization, because mm -hmm. I think that's Very what true. people are having yeah. is a real realization of what they can do and what's possible for them. And absolutely give yourself permission to consider yourself. I love that because like I said, when I often ask people like, who, how would you describe yourself or who are you or, or those type of things? It's always so past focus or resume focused, or like I said, for the education that you have or the title or so, so on and so forth. But what's true is that to be future focused about to really lean into what's possible for you and what you want to do next and what you want to step into next, that doesn't have to be defined by what you did in the past. You have the ability leaning into giving yourself permission, as you said so beautifully, Adrian, to really lean into who you are and what you want. You have the ability now to create a new future for yourself because the future hasn't been written. So you have the opportunity to take all of that and use it as a platform to step into what you're going to do next, as opposed to using what we've done in the past as just mm -hmm. the end result of all we could ever possibly do in the future, because that's not true. That's the beauty of reflecting and asking ourselves those questions and the lessons that we learned and acknowledging the things that we've accomplished and really seeing who we are, because we can take all of that and step into a new iteration of whatever we want to design for our future, because mm -hmm. tomorrow is not here. So you can create yeah, the tomorrow that you want that is so powerful yes, but we, oh, we get yeah. we help we get held captive by our past and we mm -hmm. have to understand that is nothing but a stepping stone to where we could potentially go in the future and we have to look at it that way right, right. i love this uh, statement that says our, our past informs you yes Your past informs you but it does not determine you absolutely you, de you determine you and you determine what success looks like what you want to be but here's the thing uh, one of the reasons i got into coaching is i had a wake-up call that i talk about in my book uh, sorry over here my career elevate your career for more impact of income and up until that point i'll admit that i had a fixed mindset 
Okay. I have fixed mindset. I didn't believe that I could change who I was or how I acted or whatever. This was predetermined as my DNA or just who I am, right? Yes. And then from my early, late 20s, early 30s, I really believed that I was just a fixed person. And yeah, I was kind of a pain in the butt to work with. <laughs> high achiever, had the certifications, really good at what I did, but mm-hmm. yeah. So I had some opportunities and I had a, a wake up moment during performance review time. Some of you are getting ready for performance review time. So this was also during that time of the year. I walked in expecting the usual pat on the back, no real raise and had the, the words, oh, well, after he's, oh, you do a really good job, blah, blah, blah. However, we had some <laughs> concerns and it was really around, develop- I wasn't developing our personal relationships. And up until that point, I, I hadn't realized that I could change. And through some several sequence of events and an awesome mentor stepping in to help me realize for the first time, I can change. That moment in the very first personal improvement book, which I thought was only for people who had problems. And I don't have problems. You know, <laughs> I didn't need to be working on myself. Uh, uh, all right. So after like the second or third chapter, I was like, oh my God, why did I teach this in high school? I would have avoided a lot of pain in my life. And it's like really recognizing that, oh, I have so much more impact. And here's the thing, all of you tuning in, I know Dr. Carol will agree with me. You have so much more impact than you give yourself credit for. Yes. Like you just take a moment and just reflect on this because even the little thing, and uh, social psychologists say even the most introverted individual who doesn't like leaving their home and liked being in the lockdown, okay, that person will impact over 20,000 people in their lifetime. Now imagine how many people all of you impact, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, Just put, yeah. That out there. <laughs> put that out there because Love you, are that. you are the author of your future. Love it. 100%. Yeah. And please don't let, you know, like they're saying, you said, don't let your past define your future. It's there as a learning tool, but it is not the the chapter is not finished. The book has not been written. You still have so much more that's possible for you. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is that we define our future based on our past. We look at our past and say, well, I've only been able to get this far. Therefore, I can never go farther. And Mm -hmm. I always say that we can't see beyond our own limitations, right? And so if we are stuck in those those limitations of thinking this is as far as we can go, we can't believe, we can't possibly Mm -hmm. see where we can go. It's funny, I was having a conversation with my daughter last night, who um, right now she's a CNA, which is a great role, great Mm -hmm. job. And, but she wants to go ultimately to medical school. Mm -hmm. And so she's doing it to get the experience. And she said that uh, sometimes I feel bad because I'm surrounded by other people who are CNAs and they love it. and They want to stay in that career. But I, for me, it's a stepping stone to where I want to go. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's okay for some, be, being a CNA is a great job. It's a great profession. And if people mm-hmm. want to do that's great, but you shouldn't feel bad because you want to do something else or something different or what you're right. perceiving as more because you have the capacity to believe that's something that you can do. Mm-hmm. And because you have the capacity to believe of the possibility that you can even do something like that, you're going to try to go for something like that. Right. But for a lot of people, when we can't see beyond our own limitations, when we can't see the possibility mm-hmm. of doing something different, then sometimes, and I'm not saying this for CNAs, anybody who's listening to CNA, but sometimes we just end up settling mm-hmm. for something because we don't believe that anything else is possible, right? So we settle for what I call good enough as opposed mm-hmm. to going for something better because we just don't believe that's possible. Right. And so that's why I always say we can't see beyond our own limitations. And it's, that's why it's I'm so powerful for me. Yeah, that we have to see those for what they are and break through them because that's all they are just belief patterns that we've accepted as truth when they're not at all. They're just yeah. thoughts that can be shifted and changed so that you can open up to what's possible for you in your life. Absolutely. And on the flip side of that, there from time to time, I'll, I will, I coach driven emerging leaders. And sometimes these are more later stage leaders mm-hmm. and they come to me and go, I don't like what I'm doing. I really liked when I was at this role, I was doing some individual contributing. I really, that, that gave me fulfillment. So they had passed their zone of genius. They kept going and they were like, mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I really like, I really like the turn left back there. And I just kept going and they feel like they should. 
mm. moving up the ladder. So here's oh, for you. I hate that. Okay. Stop you shitting. Know. Stop shitting on yourself. Stop shitting on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to. For those people who are either happy in your current role, be happy. Yeah. It's okay. Yes. Or, if, or if you don't want to go keep moving up the ladder because that's not your zone of genius, then stay in your zone of genius. True. Yes. That's your state of flow. That's where you need to be. There's some things that... I could have kept moving up the ladder. In fact, I tried it. I left at the level of director of continuous improvement because at that level, I was going to be traveling 80% of the time. Yeah. yeah. I tried, yeah. did not work, was miserable. So yeah. I knew that, no, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and see, that's the key though. You knew for mm -hmm. you, this wasn't right for you. And that's the thing is that you shouldn't do it because it seems like the thing you should do. You want to do something that's right for you. Like I've worked with clients who've come to me and like, I want to leave this place. I take my job. This is the, I'm in the wrong place, but really in the end, they found out actually they do love their work, that they are mm -hmm. in the right place, but it's just they're, they either weren't showing up in the way they wanted to show up. They didn't mm -hmm. have the confidence in themselves. They mm -hmm. weren't establishing themselves as the leader they were, that really the internal personal development work wasn't done. And mm -hmm. when that work was done, she actually looked around and thought, actually, I do like this work. I am mm -hmm. in a good place. I do have some really good opportunities. I can make a difference. Like she was able to see things differently because right. she was able to do that more personal work. So yeah, finding, doing something you love doesn't necessarily mean you have to do something different. It just means that maybe you just need to get clear on mm -hmm. what it is that's right for you, that makes sense for you, that's authentic to you, lean into that space, bring those things closer together. And mm -hmm. then you realize you may be in the best place of all. It was funny, after we started working together, she went from wanting to leave to her boss being being called in by the CEO and giving her a retention bonus and having her speak at conferences on their behalf. Like all of a sudden she showed oh. up in a way mm -hmm. because she was more confident and self-assured and knew what she really wanted. and so saw that it actually was in front of her and then started taking advantage of those opportunities that were right there all along. Yeah. But because she had been stuck in this way of thinking yeah. that, well, X, Y, Z isn't happening, therefore I should leave. No, it really X, Y, Z wasn't happening because she hadn't done, she hadn't moved out of the fixed mindset to the growth mindset. Right. She hadn't mm -hmm. really done that personal development work to really see her value, her worth, her potential, her interests, her desires. And once she got clear on that, she saw mm -hmm. the alignment between where she was. It was really powerful. So mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't mean you got to leave. Back to this. Yes. Yes. We do. We keep coming back to this. So yes, yes. So I love to say, oh, Mary Emma asked, what's a CNA? It's a certified. Oh, it's yeah, certified nurse assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So before we wrap up the show, I want to just leave our listeners and for those watching the replay later, of course, with some, what are some tidbits? We keep coming back to that work and self. Right, understanding what your zone of genius, understanding what your priorities are, what your values are, where you want to show up, yeah. and what's some easy steps or things that people consider to start opening up that avenue and, and exploring that more so they can create an ideal career path for themselves. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that you can do is take take a look back. I call it a, a chunks of 10 exercise, right? Take a look back over, look at your the decades over your life mm -hmm. and really start looking at what were the things that I were doing that brought me joy? What are the things mm -hmm. that I was doing mm -hmm. without even thinking about it? What were the things that people kept telling me? You're so good at this or you're so natural at this wow. or the things you were praised for or complimented for. It doesn't have to be work. It could have been something personal, a volunteer. It could have been something an aunt or uncle told you or something your best friend relayed to you. It could be a number of things. But look over the decades of your life. And the reason I say do, the, do it this way is because what we often forget is over the lifespan, we grow and change. Our, it, mm -hmm. like, like for some reason, we have this idea that we have to like pick a thing and write that our life is just and not the way it works. We grow, we develop, we change. So you have to really capture what you may have been interested at 10 doesn't mean you're interested at 30. 
But the things maybe you were good at at 10 may resonate with the things that you love to do when you were 30. Mm -hmm. So you start looking for the through thread that really speaks to almost like the top, you could probably even come up with the top five themes that you see are the commonality of things that have happened throughout your life. And this is irregardless of, like I said, looking at the outside stuff, like the degrees or things of that nature, but really leaning into that through thread that has gone through the course of your life that really signal and identifies your particular superpowers, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I, I use that analogy because I love Marvel and superhero stuff. So, I use, <laughs> but, but just like Wonder Woman has her talents and mm -hmm. Superman has his and Aquaman, like they all have their, they're all superheroes, but they all have their own through thread and they all mm -hmm. have their origin stories. So, right. So there's a, there's something about through their life that they were able to hone and develop the superpower that they have. And that is so true for you. All of us have our own superpowers. We just have to figure out what they are so that we can activate mm -hmm. them and implement them in the world. And by going back and looking over these decades of your life and asking yourself these questions and seeing the through thread and the themes mm -hmm. that emerge will give you a tremendous amount of insight into what it is that you really should lean into and what you're absolutely amazing at doing. Yeah. I mean, I call them your gifts and oftentimes these are overlooked. We take them for granted because they come so naturally. Yep. There's a part of who you are. You don't really even need to think about it. Yes. It's not something you necessarily have to develop as a skill. There's a difference between a gift and a skill. Some you know, true take true athletes, like top athletes. You have to admit there's giftedness there, right? Oh yeah. There's something inherent because I love cycling. You will not see me in the Tour de France, which is the largest <laughs> cycling event in the world. You will not see me there. It's just not, you know, like I love, I'm passionate about it, but I don't have no gift. So that's something else to keep in mind when you're thinking about these things. Even if you are super passionate about something, make sure your strengths and gifts are aligned because great if you're point. passionate about something that may not necessarily be serving you. Great point. I'm passionate about singing. I was always in choir, singing in church, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I am no Beyonce. Like I'm no, like I'm not, I am not, that's not the level, but I, in my shower, I can, <laughs> and I love, shower, singing. I love in cars and everything else. And I've done those type of things, but I know that's not the gift that I have. I know I have other gifts that other people don't have, right? And that's the case with all of us, right? We mm -hmm. There's certain things that really speak to you that are unique to you that make you the amazing, incredible person that you are. Right. And as Deidre just mentioned, she said, activate and implement. Yes. I love that. That's, I love that. that's like a that, superhero yeah. thing. Activate, implement. <laughs> <laughs> you know about superhero king? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That is so true. We all have gifts. And here's the other thing. Sometimes those gifts aren't obvious. Like they're, they express themselves as this thing because maybe of what you've done or just how you live your life. But they're really something else. Even if it's something that you are really good at avoiding doing, <laughs> it may be buried in there. So take courage and dive in and try to figure, be curious about yourself. Go yeah. explore. And own it too. Yeah. Like I was working with uh, another client and she was trying to like kind of locate something that she's really good at. And so she said, well, I listen well. And she said it like, that's nothing. But I said, but listening is really powerful because you're such a good listener. The work that you do is helping people to be heard and helping people to, you be, you're able to pull things out of others because you're able to hear things in a way that either they're not hearing or others don't hear. Like listening is a superpower. Mm -hmm. And it she, she thought about it as nothing, but that's the other thing. When you come across your gifts, don't poo-poo them as nothing. Right. Really lean into them mm -hmm. to see like how... How is this great ability to listen or to nurture or to talk to people or to connect or whatever you come up with, see how it has enhanced or helped you in other areas of your life or even in your career itself. And you'll see that that just because you're a good listener is not just anything. It's something really powerful that has helped you become successful in a lot of ways that you probably didn't even realize. Absolutely. Try not to rate or judge your own gift. Please. Yes, please. Please. <laughs> please write or judge your gift. Yes. You know, here's the thing. I mean, some gifts are not sexy. Like, you're like, oh, I'm really good at X, Y, or Z. Well, 
it's still a valid and very powerful gift. Yeah. You know, give yourself gratitude and acknowledge that for you. Yeah. Not everybody has to be the most amazing public speaker in the world. Right. To, to be successful and have a superpower, you don't have to rate or judge your gift just because you Absolutely. can't you know, melt people from afar versus having infrared vision doesn't mean you're a lesser or better superpower. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Superman is not better than Wonder Woman. <laughs> Look at there. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Carol, it's been a fantastic pleasure having you on the show. This and if fun. any of you tuning in later, watching the replay, have any questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us or comment on the replay itself. We'll be notified. We'll certainly get back to you. We'd love to have your comments and questions. That's something. And be sure to reach out to Dr. Carol directly. You can find uh, her at Dr. Let's see, Carol Parker Walsh.com. And of course on LinkedIn as well. Yep. Reach out to her yep. LinkedIn. And don't forget. Her coffee chat show is alive, live also on YouTube. We have a LinkedIn business page. We've got all the things going on. So feel free to like, follow, go out there to your podcast channel, Spotify. It's everywhere. There's some places I never even heard of. So <laughs> go out there, give us a thumbs up, give us a star rating, whatever works for you. We want to make sure that we're there and being able to give value to those of you who are tuning in either live or on the podcast later on. And Carol, it's been again. Thank you. Uh, oh, this so is much fun. fabulous. You're so awesome. And so thank you for everybody to listen. I mean, I love yeah. it. I love the participation. This has been thank awesome. Yeah. 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 So it's been Cornicious. Cornicia, have you been lurking? She said thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Yay. So such a pleasure having you on. And for thank now, you. we'll wrap up the show. Just keep in mind, friends, keep elevating. Thank you for tuning in on the Career Coffee Chat podcast. It's been a pleasure. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is coacheurban at gmail.com or tweet at coacheurban, Instagram coach.eurban or reach out to my Facebook group, Elevate Your Career. So I'd love to learn more about you, hear your insights and what questions you have. You can find out more about me at coacheurban.com. And don't forget, please do reach out on LinkedIn. You can find me at Aaron Urban. Until next time, cheers. Here's to caffeinating your career.